What is up you guys? Hope you guys are doing well during this crazy time. So today we're going to go over a medium difficulty problem called Word Ladder, which is primarily asked at Amazon, Facebook, and Google. This problem is fairly difficult. The first time I actually came across this problem, I struggled with it a lot. So I felt like it would be a good problem to go over. So our description says, given two words, begin word and end word, and a dictionary's word list, find the length of the shortest transformation sequence from begin word to end word, such that one, only one letter can be changed at a time, and two, each transform word must exist in the word list. And then it also notes that we must return zero if there is no such transformation sequence, all words have the same length, all words contain only lowercase alphabetic characters. You may assume no duplicates are in the word list. And then finally, you may assume begin word and end word are non empty and are not the same. So, all this problem is asking us to do is to find the shortest path from our start word to end word using only the words inside of our list. Now, anytime you think find the shortest sequence, you should immediately think, all right, I need to use some shortest path algorithm like breadth first search. So let's say we have a start word as BE and N word as KO, and then we have the following words CE, MO, KO, ME, and CO. So using this word list, we have four different paths that we could take to get from our start to N word. So we could go from BE to CE by changing the B to a C. CE to CO by changing the E to an O. And then finally, we could go from CO to KO by changing the C to a K. There are other paths to get from this start to N word. However, we only care about the shortest path, the one that has the least amount of words in the sequence. And in that case, that would be BE to CE to CO to KO. So in a typical breath first search, we utilize a queue and it's going to store each string that is in our sequence. And then we're also going to have an integer value called changes, which will be what we eventually return from our function, which keeps track of how many changes we've had in the sequence. So we initialize our queue to have our starting word inside of it, which would be BE. Then our changes variable is going to start at one. And this is because at minimum, we're going to have our starting word inside of our sequence. And then finally, in a typical BFS, we utilize a set to keep track of nodes that we've already visited. In this case, we're just keeping track of strings that we have already added inside of our queue. Thus, BE, our start word, would automatically be added into our set. So to start off our BFS, we need to pull from our queue. We're gonna take BE off of the queue, and we can only change one character at a time. So what that means is we're first gonna check by changing the character B if we can form another word that's inside of our word list. So we're gonna try AE, we know that's not in the word list. We try BE, BE is already in our set, so we can't use that. We try CE, and then now we know that we have a word inside of our word list. What that means is now we can add CE inside of our queue. Then we check DE, EE, FE, and so on until we'll get to ME, which is inside of our word list. So that means we add ME inside of our queue as well. So we check all the way down to ZE, and there should be no other words that we add by changing a B to another character. But now we need to check the first index. So we need to see if by changing the character E to something else, if we can form another word. So we're gonna check BA, BB, BC, all the way down to BZ. However, none of those words are inside of our word list. Additionally, the words CE and ME are going to get added inside of our set to show that we have already visited those words. And then we perform the same logic as before. We pull from our queue, so we take CE off of our queue, and we check if by changing any character we can form another word. So we're gonna see if we can change the first character, C, to another character to form a word. So we're gonna try AE, BE, which is already in our set, so it doesn't count. CE is already in our set. DE, EE, all the way down to ZE, and none of those words 
would be included inside of our word list. Then we're going to see if we can change the character E to another character. So we're going to try CA, CB. Eventually, we're going to get to the word CO, which is in our word list. So what that means is we're going to add CO to our queue and our set. Then we're going to pull from our queue again. In this case, it will be ME. Now from ME, we can go to MO by changing the E to an O. So we're going to add MO to our queue and our set. So we added MO to our queue and our set. And then another thing I forgot to mention is our changes variable is being updated on every iteration. So we have gone from BE to CE to CO, which is a total of three changes. So we're going to pull from our queue again, CO. Now we can get from CO to KO by changing the C to a K. So what that means is we need to add KO inside of our queue and inside of our set. So KO got added to our queue and our set, and then we increased our changes variable by one. Now we can pull from our queue again, which would be MO. We can get from MO to KO by changing the M to a K. However, KO is already in our set, so that means we can pull from our queue again, which in this case would be KO, and that is our N word. So once we find our N word, once we pull from our queue and it equals our N word, then we know we have found our shortest path sequence. So we would just return four from this function. So we're given a begin word, N word, and word list, and we need to return an integer, which represents the shortest path to get from begin word to N word using only our word list. So to start things off, we can just convert this word list to a set. The reason why we want to do that is because we're going to have to loop through these words. We're going to have to check if we even have a word inside of this word list. And we would much rather do constant lookups rather than linear lookups. So to do that, we're going to initialize a set of strings called set. And we can just throw in our word list inside of this hash set constructor. And we're also going to need to check if n word is even inside of this word list or not. If n word is not inside of our word list, then there is no possible path we can get from begin word to n word. So to check for that, we could say if our set does not contain n word, then just return zero. And now we need to initialize our queue and our visited set, just like in any typical BFS. All right, so we've initialized our queue and our set, and we added in begin word into both of those structures. And now we just need to initialize our changes variable like we talked about. So we can say int changes, and it's always going to start at 1. And now we're going to start pulling from our queue. So we could say while our queue is not empty, then we're going to extract the size of our queue at this time. So we could say int size is equal to q.size. Then we're going to loop over however many times size is. And this is how we're going to increase our changes variable. So now that we are iterating up to size, we are going to pull from our queue that many times. And then when we come out of this for loop, all we need to do is increase changes. Because what this variable is telling us is how many iterations it took in order to get to our final n word. And so now back on line 16, we're going to pull from our queue. So we could say string word is equal to q.pull. And we need to check if this word is equal to our n word. If it is, then we know we can just return from our function. So we could say if our word dot equals n word, then just return changes at this point. If these words are not equal, that means we have not found a shortest path yet. So what we need to do is we need to check every single character inside of this word and change it to something else and check if that word is inside of our word list. So this is where we actually get to the meat of a BFS. So first, 
we're going to loop over every single character in our word. So we're going to start at zero, and we're going to say j is less than word.length, and we're going to increase j. And now in here, we need to check every single character from A to Z and modify that one position because we can only change one character at a time. So to do that, we're going to have another for loop. We could say int k. It's going to start at whatever lowercase a is, and it's going to iterate all the way up to lowercase z, and we're just going to increase our k. And so on every single iteration from a to z, we're going to create a new string. So to do that, let's create a character array. So we could say character array is going to be equal to word to char array. And we only want to change the index at j because we can only change one character at a time. So we could say array at j is going to be equal to whatever the k character is. And now from here, we just need to convert this character array back into a string. So we could say string str is equal to a new string of array. So now what we've done here is for every single position in our original word, we're going to change that one position for every single letter from A to Z. And we're going to see if it's in our word list or not. So to do that, we could say if our set contains our string and visited has not seen it before, so it does not contain our string, then we can add this string inside of our queue and inside of our visited set. So we could say str, and then str. And so that's actually it for the main BFS portion. When we come out of this while loop, we just need to return zero because if we don't exit from line 17, that means that there was no possible path to get from begin word to end word. And in that case, we just return zero. So now let's just make sure that this code works. And there we go. So our time complexity is going to be m squared times n, where m is the size of our word and n is the size of our word list. So let's break this down. On line 13, we start our BFS by checking if our queue is empty or not. Now, in the worst case, our path is going to contain every single word inside of our word list. And remember, n is equal to the length of our word list, so that's where that n comes from. On line 15, we loop over all of the elements inside of our queue, and we consistently do that until we find our answer or our queue ends up being empty. And now as for our m squared, if we look at line 16, we pull from our queue. Line 17, we check if our word is equal to our n word. That's an O of m operation because we have to check if each character is equal to each other. And m is the number of characters that we have in the string. On line 19, we have to loop over every single character in our word for every single element that we pull from our queue. And then on line 24, we take that array and pass it to a new string. Well, that is also an O of M operation because we have to loop over that character array to convert it back to a string. So since those are nested, that is where the M squared comes from. It may seem like line 20 would also make our time complexity higher, but because A to Z is always going to be 26. So even though our word list may grow in size, line 20, that iteration process from A to Z will always only be 26. So that's why from line 19 to line 30, it will only ever be M squared. And then as for our space complexity, that will be M times N, where M is the number of characters that we have in our strings and then n is the size of our word list. In the worst case, we have to add every single word inside of our queue and inside of our set. 
So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys are staying safe during this crazy time. Feel free to check out my Patreon if you want to support me further, and I will see you guys in the next one.